the frustration for for everybody is apparent and the players know they have a powerful platform and they're going to use it uh, what kind of conversations are being had about next season and what to do if uh, we're still under this uh, pandemic? Yeah, there's a lot of conversations, uh, you know, in, in uh, league wide. And um, I've been involved with some, some of the conversations on, in our own organization, not any of the ones uh, at the league level. Uh, but I know that everybody in the league is brainstorming about, you know, how we can get fans in the building safely, because that's that's really the key to uh, getting the business back on track. You know, the the, um, the fans basically um, represent the the energy, the enthusiasm that comes with the game. It's what what kind of provides the thrill that you get when you. Um, you know, either go to a game or watch a game on TV. People don't forget that, you know, kids who watch games for the first time, one of the main things they, they feel is that energy that comes with the game. So it's crucial that we get that back uh, for that, from that standpoint. And then of course, also for the, the revenue, I think half of our revenue comes from, uh, from fans uh, and the nightly gates around the league. So that's the big, big conversation is um, what can be done safely to try to, accomplish that and and I know the league is looking into everything um you know because we don't know what stage our country will be in um particularly since from a world and global standpoint we've had one of the poorest pandemic responses what are your thoughts on the NBA having to if they have to create a regular season kind of bubble well I know just from speaking with my uh coaching colleagues and friends who were already in the current one, that it's uh, not something that sounds appealing to anybody. Uh, and, and the league knows that. I mean, the players don't want to be away from their families uh, for another chunk of months on end. And uh, nobody wants that. But, um, you know, I, I think the league is aware that um, a lot of things are outside of their control. And uh, so they have to plan for everything and we'll see what that means. Yeah, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm sure like watching though, all the basketball, it feel, reminds me of a, like an NCAA tournament kind of environment. Uh, you know, I assume anytime, granted, it's been a little while since you had the experience not being in the playoffs and certainly not being the team to beat, but what's it been like for you to be an outsider you know, looking at these games being played. I enjoy uh, games coming on at 1030 in the morning on the West Coast. I'm not, that yeah. is awesome. People don't understand how great that is. It's awesome. Yeah. It's great. And it does feel like the NCAA tournament, you know, where on a, on a work day, on a school day, there's games, games on all day. Uh, from that standpoint, it's been great. Uh, I do feel a level of uh, jealousy that uh, we're not there competing. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's, um, you know, it, I, I was talking with Draymond uh, maybe a month ago, right when the playoffs were starting, so a few weeks ago. And he said, uh, he said basically what I've been feeling now, which is when the bubble began, it was kind of like, man, we dodged a bullet and we're not in the bubble. And then when the playoffs began, it was like, man, I wish I was there, you know. <laughs> so it's, uh, you miss the competition for sure. But you're, you know, you're also aware of the sacrifice that all those guys have made who were down there. Speaking of Draymond, I've had the pleasure of working with him uh, on some TNT stuff. I was at, flew to Atlanta, did the show called The Arena that had him, Chuck, hosted by Carrie Champion and myself. What do you think of Draymond, the TV analyst? He's a natural. Um, he will be, whenever he wants, you know, he'll be, he'll be a network analyst and, and, uh, He'll do it for as long as he wants. He's he's just really good. He knows the game. He's one of the smartest players I've ever been around, and he can talk. So it's a pretty good combination. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I tell people, you know, one of the things, one of the reasons why I, Charles Barkley may be, you know, as great of a player as Charles Barkley was, but I think at at this point, you could definitely make the case that his 
his career as an analyst has surpassed his playing career, which is very bizarre to say, considering we're talking about a former MVP, somebody who took a team to the finals, you know, a ton of other awards, Hall of Famer. Draymond's the first player I've seen that I say, that guy could be the next Charles Barkley. I've yeah. never said that about anybody else um, yeah. because that's how rare a Charles Barkley is. But I can see that in Draymond, that he has huge potential. Um, he has just got to make sure that he's not fine for tampering. <laughs> 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 how much of a laugh did you get out of that? Yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a chuckle out of it. It, w- it wasn't all that surprising. We're kind of used to Draymond getting fined. Uh, it's kind of part of the package. But, uh, no, I, it was uh, – it was fun watching him just because for what you just said, I mean, he, he's got it right. He's, he's just got it. And, you know, Charles, as you said, was as great of a player as he was, and he was, you know, one of the all time greats. He's arguably a better broadcaster than a player. And um, Draymond defensive player of the year, uh, multiple time champion, all-star. He, he has a chance to be a better broadcaster than player. And that's, and that's really saying something. So um, it's just, you know, that, that combination um, of, uh, of game awareness and wit um, and presence. um, It's, it's very rare. One of the things we've seen in the bubble is that the players have been extremely persistent in discussing uh, racial injustice and in discuss- and discussing inequality because uh, there was some concern before the bubble started that where we were in the moment in the country that once the game started the players would go back to playing the games and not really talk about everything else that's come up in the country that has not been the case at all um, what are your thoughts about how the players have handled maintaining that conversation and particularly as we're t- taking this podcast where I've seen the comments that LeBron made about uh, Jacob Blake Uh, who was killed, unarmed black man killed by the police in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Um, But what are your thoughts about how the players have stayed vigilant about these issues? It's been, um, it's been inspiring, you know, um, who was the player who was interviewed yesterday, right after the game, after the big win, and he immediately steered the conversation uh, to uh, social justice. I'm trying to think, oh, it was Chris Paul. Yes, talking about voting. Yeah, I mean, a huge game. They just, you know, another comeback. They tie the series at two. Um, he played a great game. He had every every reason, if he wanted, to to be, you know, so excited that he could have forgotten about uh, that mission. And he went right into the discussion. And, uh, and I think it's great because, um, really, we need to be slapped. We need to be hit over the head with a two-by-four. Um, in order to really confront this stuff. We just do. And, and, um, and that's, um, I think that's what the players are, are feeling and that's, and the coaches too, and the, and the whole league and, and so many people around the country. Um, that's why you see how many more written on some of the players' jerseys, you know. Uh, imagine what happened to Jacob Blake um, happening at, at any time in our nation's history. But right now, you know, like there was no thought, given everything that we've watched and read and seen, a nation up in arms, a, you know, people talking about police violence, and and there just no no thought. Shoot a guy seven times in the back. So the frustration for for everybody is apparent, and the players know they have a powerful platform, and they're going to use it. And let me correct myself. Jacob Blake is not dead. He um, he did survive. Uh, but I did see a note before we started um, taping this that uh, his father said that right now he's paralyzed. Yeah. Um, and so uh, hoping for the best uh, for him. Um, yeah, I think there are people, because the ratings are down in the NBA, they're trying to make a causation there. That because the players are talking so much about social justice, that because it's in your face, that that's turning viewers off who are NBA fans who just want and I know this phrase all too well, who just want uh, players to stick to sports. What, right. what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, uh, if I, I got to think that uh, ratings would have more to do with uh, games happening, um, you know, later in the summer um, and um, happening with no fans and happening um, 
at times when they're normally not happening, 1030 on a work day, um, of course the ratings are down. Uh, are there some fans who have been turned off um, by this and aren't watching? Probably. Uh, but there, there are probably some who are inspired by it and are uh, and have turned the TV on to see what the players are are saying. So um, I, I, I don't think uh, the, the beauty of it is that I don't think the players care about anybody turning the TV off um, because of what they're saying. That's not the point. The point is we have to uh, collectively do something to uh, change a system that is that is broken. Oh, well, Steve, you and I have something in common other than our love of Pinot Noir, which I'm going to ask you about later on in this podcast. Uh, we also are uh, people who seem to stir up the president for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, the president just doesn't like us. I don't know why that could be. Uh, we're going to talk about that. And again, uh, your love of wine, because I'm looking to be educated on some on, on some Pinot Noir, uh, that and a whole lot more. And don't think I'm going to let you get out of here without telling me who the Warriors are picking um, in the NBA draft, because <laughs> clearly you're going to tell me this. Uh, that and more. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more with Steve Kerr. <laughs> 